Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show. We give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California. And we are so glad you decided to make us part of your day. Also, we are host of Collider Heroes, John Schnepp. Going on. One of these mics is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> also, your host of Jedi Council, Christian Harloff. I'm so disappointed that you don't have that lovely sweater on today. I love that. <laughs> I want to frame that thing. Also, here are Jeremy Johns. Um, uh, I, I don't even know how to follow up the mic and the sweater comment. I just say, I love you. I do. <laughs> That's also, true. here's Mark Ellis. I'm not usually here on Thursdays, but like a great lifeguard, I'm going to come into work regardless of the day. Usually on <laughs> Thursday mornings, Ashley and I are at Roscoe's. Feels weird to be here, doesn't it? It does. It really does. <laughs> I miss the chicken and the waffles. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, guys. Look, last week, last Thursday, we uh, did something a little bit different. We actually tried doing this debate of a t the top five comic book movies in the last three years. And there was so much engagement. You guys, like, so many comments came in on that that we thought we would try it again this week. Except this week, our topic is going to be a little bit more challenging. Our topic <laughs> is to come up with the five best, nay, try to come up with five decent, watchable, watchable <laughs> video game movies. We're gonna go through debate. We want you guys to debate with us, but before we do, we want to make sure you're caught up with all of today's movie news. So Ashley, take it away. Paramount Pictures has unveiled the first trailer for Baywatch. Directed by Horrible Bosses' Helmer Seth Gordon, the film is based on the popular 90s TV series and puts a comedic spin on the lifeguard tale with Dwayne Johnson filling the role of Mitch Buchanan and Zac Efron starring alongside him as Matt Brody. Baywatch opens in theaters on May 26, 2017. Deadline reports that Arrow's Greg Berlanti will helm a new revamp of the movie musical Little Shop of Horrors. The original started on stage as a musical from director Rob Roger Corman, and was then famously adapted for the screen by director Frank Oz in 1986, with a cast including Rick Moranis, Steve Martin, Ellen Green, and Bill Murray. Berlanti's film is described as a fresh take on the story about a man who raises a plant that turns out to be a carnivorous man-eater from outer space. No release date has been set. Variety reports that an English language remake is in the works for the Korean zombie film Train to Busan. The outlet mentions that both Fox and Sony were trying to acquire the rights, but they ultimately went to the French studio Gaumont. No word on a director or cast as of yet, but development is underway, and apparently Gaumont has already been approached by a number of Hollywood talent agencies and prominent directors. Universal Pictures has unveiled a new full-length trailer for the sequel, Fifty Shades Darker. The second film in the Fifty Shades trilogy is based on the books by E.L. James and finds Anastasia Steele back in the life of Christian Grey, the S&M-loving businessman who attempts to win her affections once more. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, and House of Cards filmmaker James Foley takes the helm of Fifty Shades Darker with a cast that includes Dakota Johnson, Jamie Dornan, and Kim Basinger. It opens in theaters on February 10, 2017. Get here sooner. According to a report from Variety, Walton Goggins is in final negotiations to join the cast as the villain of Tomb Raider. If his deal goes through, he'll join Alicia Vikander, who's on board to play Laura Croft in the Roar Utog directed film. Warner Brothers will distribute the film with a release date set for March 16th, 2018. Okay, so a new Fifty Shades trailer drops. This is the one that stands out to me. And it took me three or four tries. Because you know, you, you're looking for a video on YouTube and you click on something, ah, oh, that's not it. Then you go, you try to find the one that you're looking for. And I kept watching the same video. It's like, yeah, because it's so similar to the first one. I was watching the new one, but it was so similar to the first one. I thought I was just found another link to the, the original one. Now look, this is, I know it sounds crazy. As a trailer, I thought the first trailer to this new Fifty Shades movie was a good trailer. The movie's gonna be terrible, but as a trailer, if I take away the fact that I know that it's from this stupid franchise, and I just watch the trailer as a trailer, let's say it had a different title, let's say, the Knights in Cleveland was the name of the, was the name of the Knights in Cleveland, and then I watched that trailer, I say, it's not a bad trailer, so I'll give credit to you. But this new one was just exactly the same as the old one. But who can't be excited about Walter Goggins joining as the uh, the villain for the brand new Tomb Raider? They are stacking talent in that thing. So those are the things in, in the news right now that stand out to me. What about you, Jeremy? Uh, yeah, uh, Christian and I watched uh, the the uh, Fifty Shades trailer. Ooh, and we, we held hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we held hands. We had popcorn. We exchanged chocolates. We exchanged notes. And I was like, "Where's the werewolf?" And sure enough, this <laughs> other guy pops in. I'm like, "There's your werewolf." Mm. You can totally tell this is fan fiction nonsense from Twilight. <laughs> 
Twilight. But yes. the Baywatch trailer, I'm glad they went a comedic route. I chuckled a couple times in the trailer. There were a few times in that trailer I was like, that is green screen. I hope that cleans up by the time the movie comes out. Um, but I do want to see a comedy Baywatch movie. I want to see it more than the fact that there are that many cups on this table right now. Yeah. That's a lot of cups. <laughs> You're the king of cups. I mean, John, you don't have to Good feel show. bad. It takes lots of guys three or four tries to get it right sometimes <laughs> with Fifty Shades Darker. I like that trailer, actually. I really like that trailer because the movie is going to be bad, but I have liked both trailers I've seen so far. The Baywatch trailer, um, yeah, it made me chuckle a couple times, but none of the leads made me chuckle. It was always the ancillary characters, right. Right. and the one impressive thing about the Baywatch show is Wendy and I did a reaction to it live on Collider, and uh, the, it was like the opening, you know it's Baywatch. As soon as the trailer starts, you know it's Baywatch, and then all of a sudden, The Rock is jumping into this like thing that's on fire. We're like, whoa, that's like scary stuff. So that impressed me, just not the comedy, which is disappointing because I think that's what the bulk of this movie is going to right. attempt to do. Uh, and I'm a fan of Walton Goggins as well. Schnapp. Yeah, I, th I found the Baywatch uh, trailer exactly what I thought it would be. Just boobs of juggling. A lot of shots of boobies <laughs> just juggling around. Man boobies juggling around. All kinds of boobs juggling. So that, that and it's some explosions. But it's just like the TV show on steroids. So you know, I don't know uh, whether I'm going to see it or not. I have to wait for another trailer if there's actually a real story there or not, or it's just a series of jokes. Uh, Fifty Shades Darker, I'll go to lunch with you because I'm hungry. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And then a bunch of a series of weird shots of people like kind of taking their clothes off. Very good looking people taking their clothes off and putting them back on and taking them off. I don't know what that movie is going to be about. It, other than it is kind of neat that they were self-aware enough to have, like there was the one joke in the trailer where guys like, does it look like she's running in slow motion? In the upper I, side? I thought joke. that was just me. Yeah, mm. yeah that that was kind of funny. You could see funny. it too. He says you could see it too. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know, Christian. Which of these things really stand out well, to you? Well, the thing that stands out with this Fifty Shades of Nonsense is is the the director who Glengarry Glenn Ross is a great movie. It is. And but you are so right in the fact that the dialogue just jumps out at look at how awful I am. <laughs> and and then when you hear of everything behind the scenes that how much control the author had and her husband had, you can tell because that line is cool. so bad. It's like, hey, where do you want to where do you want to get breakfast? I like eggs. That's the kind of dialogue you can hear in this stupid movie. And it is Twilight fan fiction. I don't care. It'll make money. But I think the, the thing is, though, that people that do want to see the movie realize it's stupid. They just want to see it because it's popcorn. It's their, it's their first Independence Day. Um, <laughs> right. But I think that the other thing is Little Shop of Horrors, I think, is an unnecessary remake. I think that they don't need to make it at all. I don't, even if it's going to be good, I don't understand why they need to make it nowadays. And I did think the Baywatch trailer had some jokes, and you could see that this is R22 Jump Street. Um, I yeah. don't really like Horrible Bosses too much. The first one was okay. Um, so I don't know how this is going to deliver, but I think it could be something. We didn't see the Red Band trailer yet. This is a rated R film. So when, I want to see that Red Band trailer and then I'll make my judgment. I'll tell you what though. This is what got Little Shop of Horrors off the ground. Baby Groot. We call him Little Shop <laughs> yeah. of Groot and, La La and then boom. There you go. Baby Groot. Well, and La La Land because La La Land after is, is kind of kind of revitalized the musical a little bit and then Little Shop of Horrors will kill it. I would love to. I, I'm actually excited to see a Little Shop of Horrors just because of the Audrey Three that would make total sense, you know, because they've already done a second remake and then having this third one, and that it came out a long time ago. That's '86. That's a long time ago. We could watch it. It's still fresh because it's set in the '50s. It's a fun movie. It's really well directed. I want to see who's going to play the dentist. The, the yeah. person who, you had Bill Murray, <laughs> then you had Steve Martin, and now the guy who who's going to be. It the could person. be Steve Martin again. Like it, you, yeah. you and, and and I think that Little Shop of Horrors is something that's going to be fun to. It, I think it's going to be a fun remake because you're going to have a lot of new comedic talent that comes in there. When you watch the '86 version, there's a lot of neat cameos and stuff. So I think they can have some fun with this. I would say Bill Murray was the guy who liked to get you know dentistry right. done to him. You also had Jack Nicholson in there. So I mean, you <laughs> know, Rick Moranis, yeah. yeah. The well, whole bunch of different here's a, does they, look, Sticking on, on the little shop horse thing, any thoughts on Greg Berlanti being the one to I direct like it? Like this, it's, it's, an interesting, yeah. it's an interesting thing. You wouldn't necessarily put these two pieces no, together. I don't mean to crap on it right away. I just, I just, I, I guess because I just don't see it working then again. But, you know, someone like Berlanti could make it work. I'm just curious. I just wonder if they're going to, they won't go musical. You know what I mean? Like, I think they will. No, I yeah. think they're going to go musical. I think musical. there's going to be a yeah. niche market for it. Get Weird Al Yankovic to help out. Like, there's a lot of elements that are, that you, you don't see a comedy musical much anymore. Right. La La Land was straight up. A lot of the musicals you see are things like Chicago or Moulin Rouge, where it's more about a romance. This is going to be a lot of laughs, I hope. Might be funnier than Baywatch. You know what? I was on the fence until you said Weird Al Yankovic. Now I'm in. <laughs> I'm completely in on that. But in, in defense, that works for anything. Sure. Right. Absolutely, it yeah. does. All right. La La Land with Weird Al Yankovic instead of Ryan Gosling. <laughs>
That's a movie. I, I want to see SNL do that. It's like redo the La La Land trailer. Just With take Weird out Ryan Gosling and put in Weird Al. Sure. I think that's a movie to be Careful, made. don't say a lot. They'll, they'll do it. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. Listen, we're going to get now to this, the main topic of the day here. We are going to try our very best, put our noses down to the stone, and get us five, the best five, a.k.a. watchable, as Christian would say, <laughs> video game movies. We want you guys to debate along with us. Now, here's how this process works. In round one, we are each going to nominate a film that should be in our top list, okay? And we're going to come up with a list of seven to start. Christian will nominate a film, we'll debate whether or not it should be one, and then we'll keep nominating individual films until we have seven. Then we move on to round two, which is the elimination stage, where we get rid of two of the films to come down to five. And then we move into round three, which will be the ordering of the five, ranking those five. So, Christian... <laughs> Hey, wait, Let's... before we start, could I have just suggested we do the bottom 20 video games? Because that would have been, <laughs> it been easy. pretty It'd be easy. Easier. That's an easy one to do, yeah. yeah. So, we'll, no, but we take on a challenge here. We go with the top five. So, Christian, you're up first. Nominate the first video game movie for the list. This is horrible. I mean, when you look at I'm looking at my list, and I'm, I'm embarrassed that I have to write any of these names on any list that anybody should ever watch. But I guess we have to do that because that's what we're doing. Um, I'm going to nominate Warcraft. I think with a director like Duncan Jones, did it did it deliver to a mainstream audience? No, I don't think it did. But I think that whoever played the game, I was sitting next to you. I know you're a big Warcraft guy, and you were getting excited. Like there were things that Easter eggs that were thrown in there. Like I'm a fan of this. I understand this. And I was like, cool. I don't. Um, but watching it, I think that I actually when it ended, I said. I would be up for seeing where this goes. It's the only video game movie that I've said that so far, so Warcraft for me gets the knock. Mark, what do you say? Say it with me, Johns. Mortal Kombat! Voting on his nomination. I, 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 Come I, on, I, you've done this before. No, yeah, oh, that's right. I, okay, I knew what we had to do, but he said say it with me, Johns. I couldn't yelling, say no. You could have totally bailed yeah, on that. And yeah, I yeah, been out no, I couldn't. I couldn't. I'll say yes or no. Yeah, yeah, then I'll say yes. You're gonna go. You're you're gonna go yes on Warcraft. I wasn't saying Mortal. I was. Agreeing with oh, him. When okay. I say Mortal Kombat, that's me being that's, affirmative. That's like a Klingon war cry of Kapla. So you that's a you agreeing. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Okay. So we got two votes for Warcraft. <laughs> Mark it down for three. I like this movie. Look, they they did some there's some horrible, horrible casting in Warcraft. There absolutely is. But as a guy who spent a ridiculous, ungodly amount of time playing this game to the point that I would piss in my empty Pepsi <laughs> bottle so I didn't have to get up and go to the bathroom. That's a fan. That's a, that, that's, that's, a that's a little bit of obsession right there. There was enough in there that I enjoyed. I love. I remember getting that same feeling I got when I watched the first Lord of the Rings and they show you the Shire and I felt like I'm in the Shire. In the beginning of this film and where they're doing all this stuff, I, I felt like I was in Azeroth. I did. So I, I enjoyed it enough. Is it going to be in my top 10 films of the year? Nope. But does it make my top five video game movies? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that makes... Three votes. I don't know, John's. Would, would it make it? It's in already, but would you vote yay or nay on it? Say it with me, Ellis. Mortal <laughs> Kombat! Uh, that's yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, so it's four yeah. yeses. You know what? It's not in my top five. It was. Really? It's like, yeah, like when I was looking at all these other video games, I mean, there's, I don't know how many there are. There's like 30 or something like that. Four and plus. So yeah. many of them are horrible. Yeah. I mean, War Warcraft is not a horrible film, but. It just didn't do it for me. Like I wanted to love it because I played Warcraft and I really was into wanting to get into it. I just couldn't get into it. So some of my other picks, you guys might be like, those suck, but not, you know, it's just a level of Is there right. a rule that says that Schnepp can't pick just Resident Evil movies? <laughs> nope, there's no such rule. Hey, man, I'm not saying it's I'm picking all Resident the Resident Evil movies. movies. All right, well, uh, that does it. It's We it's got in. four votes to one. Right, Warcraft becomes the first movie <laughs> on our right. list. So, uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, talk about anticlimactic. Oh. Hey, Mark. You got a movie you'd like to uh, nominate? Say it with me, John. Mortal Kombat! Part one. <laughs> yeah, not two. Not, not two. An yeah. that All right, so it. you're going to go for Mortal Kombat. I, I, I by far think this is the best video game movie ever made. It's so much fun. It feels like March Madness in Outworld. You get to see all these different brackets of people going against each other just for no other reason. The opening time you meet. Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Yeah. They walk in together because they're under Shang Tsung's mind control right. power, whatever. It's such a badass opening, and the movie picks up from there. Jeremy, yay or nay does Mortal Kombat get on the list? Say it with me, Mark. Oh, no. <laughs> Mortal Kombat! 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. For all the reasons Mark said, it's the most fun. I mean, it did the game justice and the lore of the game justice. Or actually, it's thick lore. And yeah, when uh, when Scorpion and Sub Zero come in, and the soundtrack alone, I have the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. It was one of the first CDs I bought. Um, I had fun with this movie. I really did. I, I wish they did a follow up film that was good. But uh, Mortal Kombat absolutely is. If I had to pick my number one video game movie, it's. That Are you one. suggesting Annihilation wasn't good? I Ooh. am <laughs> very. I'm suggesting that they should have gone another way. All right, Schnapp, that's two votes for Mortal Kombat. Does it get on the list, or do we still have to wait till we get to uh, over here to Christian? Uh, say it with me, Johnson. <laughs> Ellis, Mortal, Mortal Kombat! Kombat! Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Mortal Kombat is my number one video game Don't pick. Don't give that I'm, away already. I'm too late. I gave it away. These cards are on the table. <laughs> and these, all these video game movies suck, but this one is like the least sucky, and it's got the greatest action sequences for no reason. They have, you know... Uh, Scorpion just like in the in the middle of the woods. Remember that he's fi- yeah. fighting Johnny Cage. Well, there's like, different tournament sites. I know they, they jumping through little vortexes and stuff. None, none of it made sense to me. It doesn't matter. It was a fun movie, and I love the 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 music soundtrack was great. So yeah. Mortal Kombat. Uh, Mortal Kombat is a terrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I'm sorry. It is objectively oh. all film is subjective, but it is objectively a terrible movie. And I love it. It's got oh. like all the oh. cheese in it is so delicious. It's just such great, cool cheese that I mean, <laughs> you got you got the Highlander as Raiden. I don't know yes. where that came from, but I, I'm gonna vote yes on it. I think it deserves to be on the list. I'd only vote yeah. against it for one reason. That's to stop Mark from screaming that over and over again. <laughs> you no, know, uh, do it's, it. It's not great. Um, but yeah, the movie itself it, it deserves to be on the list. All right, that does it. Mortal Kombat becomes the second film on our list. So now it comes to me to nominate a film to be on the list. And there's a couple here that I would have put on already. But I'm going to go for something I don't think anybody else had thought about. I'm going to need for speed. Uh, which is, you know, one of the, I was so expecting that movie to just triumphantly suck. But when they went in and we heard going into the movie that there is no CGI in this film. All the car crashes and racing, all, all that is real practical effects. And on that level, I went in, I was really impressed by it. A great story, no. Magnificent Oscar-worthy performances, no, and all that kind of stuff. But the fact that they were trying something that you just don't see done anymore made me appreciate on that level. So I'm, I'm going to throw up Need for Speed as my nominee. I don't know. What do you think, Jeremy? Does Need for Speed get on? I absolutely agree with you. Uh, in my review for Need for Speed, I was like, it's a good time if you're drunk. If you have the right amount of alcohol consumption, <laughs> this movie is a lot of fun. And it might even be fun, uh, a, a bit of fun sober. And that's the best we can hope for. Any mo- Most movies on here, there's no saving them. There are going to be movies on this list. There are going to be films that I throw out. Out, that I'm going to be like, I wouldn't watch this again, but we're doing a <laughs> list. And so it has to be on there. But Need for Speed, I think if we're doing our top seven is what we're doing. Right now, yeah. Yeah, we're just getting a list of seven together. I think Need for Speed deserves to be in the top seven. Snap, sure. does Need for Speed get on? It does. I only wrote down five video game movies, <laughs> and one of them is Need for Speed yeah, yeah. because right. – I thought it was really fun. It was entertaining. Michael Keaton as the, you know, the mastermind yeah. <laughs> DJ guy. Everything about it was great. And, you know, definitely being sold on those practical effects and then watching them happen in real life or real life as in the movie real life part was so much fun. I thought it was really well done. Aaron Paul did a good job. It wasn't a horrible film. It's not the greatest, you know, action film ever made. But I think as far as a video game adaptation to a movie, it really works really well. Any dissenters over here? I thought it was crap. But, I, but but that being said, I still think it should be in the list. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I, it's in it's in my six. I know, isn't I that wrote. incredible? It's a really bad movie. I, I I had fun with it for the first two acts, and then the last I was done with it. But, it was a bad uh, third act, yeah. Yeah, but it's one of the better ones. I thought it was pretty horrible, and it would not be in my top seven at all. Michael Keaton's the only redeeming quality of that movie. I thought the acting was pretty atrocious. Mr. Robot gets naked in the middle of an office for no reason in it. Mm -hmm. It's such a bad movie, and it gets worse to the point where the climax, 38 cops die trying to pull over these speeders, and we're supposed to root for them. Like, oh, hey, you guys killed a bunch of law enforcement officers because you made them wreck. Way to go. Fun movie. It's a a video game. All right, four to one. So now, as of just to catch you up where we're at, we've got three films films on the list so far we got warcraft has made the list mortal kombat has made the list and need for speed has made the list we got to get four more so jeremy what's your nomination god i don't know hold on <laughs> so seriously you just have five minutes to come up with your nomination I, well, I, I, there. I'm, I'm, I'm tossed between two right now i i'm gonna nominate all right here it is now that we've established that the best three are on the board and now we're actually digging into movies we don't like trash <laughs> all right um i'm gonna say the first silent hill movie 
The mm. first Silent Hill. Not the second Silent Hill. Right. The first Silent Hill. It was good up until the very end where it became tentacle video game weird nonsense mm. with thorns. Mm. I thought that was stupid. Leading up to it, it was actually a pretty solid horror film. So I'm going to say the first Silent Hill. Schnepp, first Silent, Silent Hill. Hill get in? Uh, for a film that has someone banging in the door, help me, let me in, and then she's de-skinned by one of those pyramid right. head guys. I mean, I'm, yes, voting for it. Of course, I'm going to vote for Resident Evil. That's going to be my pick. I'm just letting you know right away. Spoilers. But uh, of the horror video games, I know I'm hard about these games. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suck at I suck at the schmodown. I'm bad at these uh, countdowns. Whatever. Um, <laughs> Silent Hill is completely worth watching just because of the right. creepy, slow-moving nurses. There's a lot of horror imagery in there that translates not only from the creepy game but to a creepy, weird, fun horror movie. Yes, does it fall apart in the third act? Of course it does. Um, but, uh, yeah, it should be on that list until it gets supplanted by Resident Evil. <laughs> the mark does it get on the list? Uh, it does. It, 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 will, it will make it in my right. top seven because I'm a sucker Hill gets for on horror the list. movies and it has some good chills for a while. Uh, and Christian? I've never seen it, but it's, it can't be worse than the other one of these crap. <laughs> <laughs> default you're, yeah. you're literally and taking a blind yeah throw. yes yeah. Well, I, it's I the one think, i hear that people say you know that's scary enough for a stupid movie fine yeah it's 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 not a good movie but it's in this list i think it right. gets on the seven so silent hill now gets on the list we got room for three more hey schnapp hey don't keep us all in suspense <laughs> what's your nomination uh, let me i gotta look at my notes for a second <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's resident evil apocalypse which one's that? The first one? It's the second one. The second oh, one was like the best one. The second one is the best oh, is one. Okay. There's, they so have the five of them. There's a sixth one coming out. The second one is the best because they actually go into this kind of crazy thing where Mia Jovovich plays this. She gets this super virus inside of her body where she can do incredible things. She's almost like a superhero. So you have this superhero fighting monsters and zombies. And it, the set pieces in it were great. It had a, real, a lot of great action in it. So for me, that, that was the one when I first saw Resident Evil, I was like, eh, it was okay. Second film got me was like, wow, this franchise is actually exciting. I could see a, it, a lot more happening with it. Third one is okay. Fourth one, and then it goes down in that order. But Resident Evil Apocalypse is for me. Jeremy, does it get on the list? I I do agree with him. It's, it's exactly how it went down. First one, I'm like, what's this nonsense? Second one, I was like, okay, it has Jared Harris in it, bringing a little credibility mm -hmm. to the franchise. And then it, it just progressively falls apart with every movie. But it was the movie that made me think there was hope for the franchise. There isn't. But the second Resident Evil movie, I admittedly had fun with. So I'm going to say Can sure. I just add also that this is the only video game movie on this list that has six sequels? It's got to be doing something <laughs> sure. right. Even um, in the realm of suckage. Hell no. <laughs> the second hell no right. to anything Resident Evil. This entire franchise sucks. The, <laughs> the action is not good. The cinematography is not good. The story is not good. No. No, John, I say. John, John no, a, I say. Well, we, we've established these are bad movies. <laughs> I know, but I... I but uh, you, uh, Christian, yeah. let's go to you. Um, I am with... John, yeah. I hate these movies. Oh, John Schnepp? Awesome. No, can't be. If I could physically fight a Resident Evil movie, I would. Uh, I would rather watch. I would rather. I would rather watch a piece of toilet paper with a stick and Nikes eating hot dogs for three hours than watch any of these stupid movies. Slow motion. Look at this. <laughs> Every time the same stupid shot, get rid of it altogether. Okay, so it, this is the first one that's come down to the yep. final vote. Yep. Mark Ellis, it comes down to you. Does Resident <clears throat> Evil get on the list? All the pressure. Ah, I live for these kind of moments, you boys. You have a chance to kill Resident <laughs> Evil. I think what it. I'm going to say here is that I think that Resident Evil Apocalypse is the best of the Resident Evil movies. It also happens to be one of the three that I've seen. Um, having said that... <laughs> If you gave me the choice between watch Resident Evil Apocalypse and drink a bottle of Pepsi given to me by John Campia right after he played Warcraft, uh -huh. I would probably still take <laughs> the bottle of Pepsi. <laughs> Resident Evil, you're done. Uh, uh, Resident Evil. Now you have to have a new number one. On I tried, Mia. I tried. <laughs> I need a new number one. All right, so we got our first one that gets rejected off the list. We're still sitting at Warcraft, Mortal Kombat, Need for Speed, Silent Hill. We need three more. Christian Harlow. <laughs> three <laughs> more. It's such a bad list. Uh, I got one. Throw it out. I got Oh, we're going to be doing this list for a while because I, I can't imagine anyone's going to take this one because it is not good and it was the start of the whitewash. It is Prince of Persia. Uh, Pr <laughs> Prince of Persia is a movie that by all means is not good. However, 
Jake Gyllenhaal is one of the best actors out there. Um, should he have been cast in this role? Absolutely not. But for what he did, and with, I was still entertained. It had Toby Kebbell in it. It had a story in it that I was ben still... Ben Kingsley. It had Ben Kingsley. It was a movie that, as I was watching it, with the time <laughs> elements and I, and, and Gemma Artisan, who I'm a big fan of also, it had the right cast. It just did a lot of things wrong. And I found myself, if it, it was on cable, I could watch it again. So is it a good movie? No. Does it deserve to be in the top seven? Yes. Okay. Mark. Not only is that a legendary film in the history of Schmoes, no, because we saw that movie and it's a double feature. Then we went to go see Sex and City 2, which was legendarily <laughs> bad. I am going to ratify Christian's nomination and say that I, too, think Prince of Persia is among the top seven best video game movies of all time. It's a fun action movie. Uh, that your double header sounds almost as bad as the double header that me, Schnepp, and Dennis did when we went to go see the Seventh Sun and Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> that was an incredible oh, no, double was, header. That was also an incredible double header. Um, I am going to ratify wow. your thing. Yeah. It, I would, I would go for absolutely the wrong casting decision. The whole, lots of big mess. I would qualify this one as. If you're a little intoxicated, it is kind of watchable <laughs> right. yeah. in that sense, and that's good enough to get on our top seven. What do you guys think? Any dissent um, on that? I, I won't charge you if you say it's a good time if you're drunk. You can say that. I give you permission <laughs> to yeah, that. You make a nickel every time somebody says that, right? <laughs> well, that's why I won't charge it's you. Michael um, over here. Yeah, it, it's better than Resident Evil Apocalypse, thus it deserves to be on the list and would, by default, have my vote. There were parts in here I had fun. Shab? You guys all suck. Um, <laughs> screw this movie. I don't like sand. Dude, I will Anakin watch Skywalker? all six. I will watch all six Resident Evils before I ever watch Prince of Poop again. Get <laughs> it? Poop. All right. Matter. So now we now we have five on the list. We got Warcraft, Mortal Kombat, Need for Speed, Silent Hill, Prince of Persia. We need two more. Mark Ellis, do you have the one that will take up the sixth spot? I, I think I do, John, because out of all these video game movies we're talking about, this one might be the most shameless, hey, we want to make money because this is a video game. But I also think just as far as the quality of film goes and the demographic it's marketing to, I'm going to say the Angry Birds movie belongs in the top seven. I think it's a worthy nominee. Uh, Christian. I will go ahead. I didn't even have that on my list, but after hearing it, um, I... I made such a good argument. No, it's just nothing else. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say yeah, Angry Birds, and because I like to, like Ken said last week, shake it up a little bit, and we got an animated movie in there, too. Mm -hmm. So Angry Birds, yeah, that makes the cut for me. Okay. Um, and you know what? I, I, it was the one I was going to say next. It's, it's a harmless little animated film with some good laughs in it. Mm -hmm. um, is it, it is a... Would, is we sit to, would we sit down and go, hey, Angry Birds is a good movie? No. No, I wouldn't. But it's it's endurable and it has some moments and stuff like that. Uh, so that's three. It's right? endurable. It's endurable. That's a comment to you say that, that this is poster. a good movie. You put that it's endurable. It's endurable, it's endurable. <laughs> John Campia. You won't hate yourself after yeah. watching. It. No okay. suicidal thoughts after Angry Birds. Angry the movie. Angry Birds. It's not the Resident Evil movie. All right. Yeah. Now we. So it, it makes spot. the list. It gets on there. We're down to the last spot. And we are getting down to the oh, bottom. Yeah. Don't of do the it. There's yeah. one right answer. Come on, Street Fighter. All right. There's one right answer. I'm gonna throw one out here brace yourselves this is one of those movies that is so entertaining because it is truly so bad not like mortal kombat which tried to be fun it was Jeez. fun this one was like accidentally um entertaining i'm gonna go for in the name of the king Ooh, a dungeon that? siege Ooh, tale Jason, you're a an Uwe bull movie, movie? Yeah. it's an uva <laughs> bull bull movie. can't be you've, you've lost your mind <laughs> i yeah. told you we were down <laughs> to the bottom <laughs> of the barrel well, so save yourself time collectively vote Everyone at the table. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. no, no, no. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. It's Jason Statham. No. Everyone's collecting it's, a paycheck in yeah. that movie. Yeah. It is movable. No, it is. It is so bad. Like I said, it's not like Mortal Kombat where Uva. they tried to be cheesy and fun. This is He's so monumentally awful. Yeah. It is so monumentally awful. You can't take your eyes off the screen. It's, it's like watching sucks. a car wreck happen it's on the highway. It's hilarious because they were trying to set that up for a whole. There's a bunch oh, of Dungeon yes, Stage video games yeah. and it just did not work. And that's a big no. <sighs> Okay, so, uh, surprise, surprise, uh, Dungeon Seats does not get on the list. I'm not surprised at all. Hey, honey, how was your day? They didn't like the Dungeon Seats. Oh, no, no, I wasn't going to fight for it. All right, then we got to come up the neck. We need still one more. Do I got you got it. it? I got it. What is it? We got to go full guilty pleasure on this one. We have to go. We ha it's, it's not good, but I know every line to the Van Damme Street Fighter. Whoa, it has whoa. to be. Street on this list, right. is it a good movie? No. Is it a fun movie? With the, with the right amount of alcohol, it can be. Under the right circumstances, it could be. 
<laughs> that's just <end> yeah. <laughs> that's my sales. <laughs> this is just yeah. the movie that Raul Julia wishes he didn't make, and it came out it's after he was right. dead. It's it's exactly. Don't see this movie. It's omitted from his IMDb. <laughs> yeah. It's like is he, it he really? was Gomez Adams, and oh, then wow. he died. It's sad. He was you know, Bison, was and like then that. nobody cared. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, However, I, that's my vote. I I think I would rather watch Doom. Yeah. Didn't watch this thing again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I mean, I didn't have fun with it. I mean, I, the right amount of alcohol, sure, but the right amount of alcohol and, you know, Betsy looks good on Tinder. I don't. Yeah. I just don't think this. What's the way wrong I'm, with Betsy? <laughs> I'm just. I'm just saying. I, I. I. For me, it's a no. What do yeah, you think? I got an Ixnay uh, Street Fighter is on that. You know, it's pretty low. It's near Double Dragon. It's not. It's Double better Dragon. than Mario that Brothers. Just, just took my next nomination. Yeah. Right, no. I'm just I, yeah. This is going to be a top six, by the way. <laughs> no, no, okay, hey, no, it's still alive. That. It's still alive. We yeah, got two more the, votes here. Uh, now look, uh, I do want to build up some drama because I'm such a huge Jean Claude Van Damme fan. I was right in the wheelhouse when Street Fighter got announced and Van. Dan was going to be playing Guyland. I was like, this is going to be better than Hard Target, which at that point was the greatest <laughs> film ever made. And um, JJ, I love you. I appreciate you hanging out with me on Mortal Kombat. So I'm going to vote yes simply because I know wow, he's okay. not. Okay, so Street <laughs> I'm only voting because I know it. there is no I'll chance in it. hell of it making the list. Uh, hey, look, hey, look, su surprises have happened in things like this. Don't let me down. Christian yeah. Harloff, <laughs> does Street Fighter get on the list? It's down to you. Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I, I, the, the, the thing was is that there's, there's one movie that we haven't brought up yet right. that I believe you're going to bring up, and it, it, it can't be left off the list. So for that reason, Ooh. if this movie right. didn't exist, then I probably would have voted. Okay, so just <laughs> right. a reminder before we go to John Schnapp, we got Warcraft, Mortal Kombat, Need for Speed, Silent Hill, Prince of Persia, and Angry Birds right now on the list. We got room for one more. I didn't have it. Jeremy didn't have it. Hey, I Schnapp had it. <laughs> Snap, do you have it? And I'm not going to say Resident Evil Afterlife or Resident <laughs> it, none of the, It's Laura Croft Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, Angelina Jolie played this uh, this character after the really popular video games, and everybody was like, ah, it's just going to be you know some TNA, this and that. But it was actually a kind of fun film. They did a lot of big set pieces. They had a lot of action in it. The movie didn't suck. Was it? Is it one of the greatest films ever made? Absolutely not. Is it one of the best video game adaptations? It should be at least in the top seven. So that's what I'm saying. I'm going to just go ahead and say yes. I mean, it, it's a. It is probably the one comic book movie or a video game movie, I should say, that over the years I've said that's a good movie. It's it's the first one. At any, yeah. any rate, it's pretty good. I'm going to say yes. It needs one more vote. Either any of you gentlemen going to give it? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, are you dissenting? Well, I, I need to say this. There will be people who will address the fact that Final Fantasy VII Advent Children is nowhere on this list. It was not theatrically released, although it did play in one theater in Spokane once, but it doesn't qualify. That's why it's not on here. Don't worry. I tried to have your back. Now, I now, tried. Now, by the way, there might be some people at home, understandably so right now, screaming at the screen, wreck it, Ralph! Right. Wreck It Ralph is not a video game movie. Yes, there are the, the world of video games is referenced in it, but it's not like video, Wreck It Ralph was not a video game that a movie right. then looked at and said, "Oh, let's make a movie based Same on this." Same for Tron. Tron came out. Same afterwards. for right, Tron, right. exactly. So that's why those films aren't in there. All right, we've got our seven. We got Warcraft. We have Mortal Kombat, Need for Speed, Silent Hill, Prince of Persia, Angry Birds, and Tomb Raider. Mm. So now we got seven films. Now we move on to round number two, where we got to pull out our boards here. We have to vote two of these movies off. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to do it a little bit differently than we did it last week. What we're going to do is each of us are going to write down our top pick to eliminate. We're going to hold up our signs then. If there are three votes of the same movie, that movie gets bo 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 uh, booted off. If it's two to two with one outstanding, the one outstanding one will recast their vote, and then that film will get booted off. So, gentlemen... With the uh, do 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 mm. thing going, it's time to put down which one we went want off. Okay. okay. La 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 la. Just one la, or two. La, just one. Just one. Right now, now, just one. <clears throat> we'll get down to the second one in a second. This is gonna be so All mixed. Right. So, uh, Christian, hold up your sign. Get out. Need for speed. Need. He wants need for speed out. I feel the need, the need to vote <laughs> off Need for Speed. Get All right, there. Need for Speed has two votes off. It just needs one more to be eliminated. I'm going That's Prince of oh, Persia. Oh, man. Come on. Jeremy? Somebody get Need for Speed. Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Angry Birds oh. and... Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Right. I need Angry Birds. Oh. I have what to now recast my vote, so it is either, between... Either, so it's either, either Angry Birds oh, or He's going, Angry, Angry Birds is gone. We know this. Nah, no, um, we got this. No, he likes Need nah, for Speed. He'll take care of us. Come on. He's, he's a neighborhood guy. Yeah, I'm going to say... Angry Birds yeah. gets eliminated. <laughs> so yes. now Angry Birds is off the list. I can't believe that. Angry oh, Birds is gone. One of the gone. better movies that is. <laughs> <laughs> <One of those. laughs> get, get a pig and like, yeah. or like. It wouldn't have been my vote, but yeah. hey, I had to choose between. Okay, so now we get down. Let's do the vote again. 
I already know what you two guys are gonna do. Yeah. Let's see if these oh, guys, yeah. one of these yeah. guys, now supports you. All right. Here Which is the final film to be eliminated from our list? We are now down to Tomb Raider, Prince of Persia, Silent Hill, Need for Speed, Mortal Kombat, and Warcraft. One has to be eliminated. I already know what you two are voting. Yep. So, Schnepp, hold it up. Prince of, Prince of Persia. <laughs> I still have Prince of Persia. No one takes Street Tomb Fighter from me. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. All right, now, Jeremy, Revenge. you have to cast the deciding vote. Yeah. Is it going to be Prince Need of Persia that Prince gets Persia. eliminated? Or is it going to be Need for Speed that gets eliminated? Oh, just oh, name it. Come oh on. My God. God. Yeah, one of those two. Uh, is, is Prince of Persia eliminated yeah, yeah. or is Need for Speed eliminated? Write it down. Keep us in suspense. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> I want that suspense. Oh, he's he's got to take that time. He's writing. I cannot see. <laughs> I can see the answer on the tip of his tongue, and I'm trying to get ratings here. Uh, here it goes. And the his road is. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> The tension, you can cut it with a chainsaw. All right. Um, Which uh, one gets eliminated? Oh, bad. All right. right so, Need for but you. Those are good points about Need for Speed. Um, but Need. Nee, all right. Prince of Persia is going to get eliminated for that. Yes! Yes! Persia gets eliminated. Uh, so horrible. I had more fun horrible. with Need for Speed, uh, like as a whole. All right. I'm, I cannot wait to see what people at home write in the comment <laughs> section. About this. this is going to be awesome. Okay. So we are now down. We move into phase three, which is our ranking phase. Our five films that will be in our top five video game movies are Warcraft, Mortal Kombat, Need for Speed, <laughs> Silent Hill, <laughs> and Tomb Raider. These are our top five. Angry Birds and Prince of Persia have been eliminated. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Okay, so now here's how this part works, guys. We're each going to write, we're going to start with the number five slot. Which of these films should be number five? <clears throat> Same rules as the last round. Whichever film gets three nods gets that spot. So let's write it down. What should be in the number five spot? And shoot, I'm having trouble. Uh, this is the greatest top five ever. Okay. By the way. <laughs> Go ahead. Good idea. Go ahead, Christian. Uh, <laughs> need, need for speed. Need for speed, all right. We got need for speed. I'm going to go Silent Hill. I'm going Silent, Silent Hill. Silent Hill, what's Ooh. the tiebreaker? Need for Speed. Need for All right, Need for Speed, moral that's victory. it. Yeah, moral victory. So our number five film in our top five video game movies of all time <laughs> All is time of all speed time. That is so for sad. Speed. I know. <laughs> Fix it, the genre. It beat out. <laughs> I beg of you. Doom. It beat out Doom. Yeah. Remember that movie? I mean, there's so many. The list of movies Doom that could have really been good. Bad. Yeah. It's just all horrible. right. <laughs> let's move on to which movie gets our number four spot. No surprise for me because I already voted it. Silent Hill gets mine for number four. Silent Hill. For Christian me. goes silent. Yeah, everybody goes Silent Hill. Silent. We got Silent Hill. Silent Hill. Well, it's a Silent Hill kind of day. And uh, <laughs> Quiet Mountain. Silent Hill. It's unanimous. Silent Hill gets the number four spot. Okay, so number five is Need for Speed. Number four is Silent Hill. This is gonna get a little bit tight now. Uh, let's go into our number three film. I, you know what? I think we might get unanimous here. We might. I have seen the future, That's and right. it goes All down All right, like let's this. hold them up. I've got uh, Warcraft, Tomb Raider, Warcraft, and... Mortal Kombat. And Mortal Kombat. So we only have two... Well, the one that votes... The one that's in the lead That's, right now, only one movie has two votes. What's in two, what has two uh, votes? Tomb Raider, right? Warcraft. No, Warcraft. And Tomb Does Raider Tomb Raider have two votes? votes? Yeah. yeah, Tomb Raider has two votes. All right, Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat has to recast the their out. votes. <laughs> so either Warcraft, it's either Warcraft or, or Tomb Raider. Which one is the number three film? Christian Harloff yeah, will hard, isn't it? alone decide what, what the number three again? film is. Yeah. All right. Jake so this, this is what the number three is. Program. Yeah, All the right. one you would watch over this the other This is the one. number three no, film. No, I'm doing it for future. Is going to be Tomb Raider. Yeah. Tomb Raider think, comes in at number three. I think the three. Alicia Vil uh, Vikander one is going to reboot it and be better <laughs> yeah. later on. So. Okay, so our number Alicia, five sorry. film is Need for Speed. Number four is Silent Hill. Number three is Tomb Raider. Now let's move on. Now, guys, here's where we're going to a little different. We know that the final two films here are Mortal Kombat and Warcraft. We are not voting for the number two spot. We are voting for the number one film. What is our number one film? Okay, we're writing it down. Can we write it or just yell it? Uh, <laughs> I'll, just start, in I'll case. start with the yell. Can okay, go ahead. Yes. Warcraft! <laughs> no! Gonna Betrayal! Do Betrayed I'm suicide. Okay. If you want to sing it loud, sing it proud. Mortal, Mortal Kombat! So our final list, our list is officially, take this to the bank, 
Call all the networks. <laughs> this is the official now oh, man. top five Greatest. video game movies of all time. At number five, Need for Speed. Number four, Silent Hill. Number three, Tomb Raider. Number two, Warcraft. And our number one video game movie of all time is Mortal Kombat. Whee! Yeah. So there we go. <laughs> Some sad stuff hey, going on. You know what? Wow. Uh, the list that we we had a list made of all the movies. Blood Rain didn't get on. There's so Oof. many movies that suck. Super it's un Brothers unbelievable. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 Max Payne. We should have done all the these horrible five, films. Next time, top seven worst. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. We could, we could yeah, probably that do that easy. one. Can I say easy. something, though? And I want yeah. Assassin's Creed to know no pressure whatsoever. Assassin's Creed. No, there really isn't any pressure. It's not going to be hard to top that list. Yeah. Yeah. No, look. It's it's, it's pretty hard to stop Mortal Kombat. Wow, pretty it tough. is. Please fix the genre. All right. <laughs> Listen, guys, it is, uh, since it is Thursday, it's time for us to talk a little bit about what is opening this week. Brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. We got two films to talk about right now. Ashley, which ones are those? First one is Nocturnal Animals. An art gallery owner's life is marred by the constant traveling of her handsome second husband. While he is away, she is shaken by the arrival of a manuscript written by her first husband, who she has not seen in years. The manuscript tells the story of a teacher who finds a trip with his family turning into a nightmare. As Susan reads the book, it forces her to examine her past and confront some dark truths. Also coming out is Miss Sloan. Willing to bend the rules for her clients, Elizabeth Sloan, Jessica Chastain, remains one of the most sought after lobbyists in Washington, D.C. When asked to help oppose a bill that imposes regulations on firearms, she joins a scrappy boutique firm that represents the backers of the law, where her defiant stance and determination to win makes her the target of a powerful new enemy who threatens her career and the people she cares about. Christian, which of these films are you looking forward to the most? I've seen Nocturnal Animals, and it's one of my favorites of the year. Mm. Um, I love this movie, and I think it's a really smart movie. I think it's one of those movies similar to Arrival to where you can't stop thinking about it, and you mull over it for a while. So it, it, it with great performances from Jillian Hall and Amy Adams, but a nomination for Michael Shannon, I think, is coming. And I think Aaron Taylor Johnson was really good in the role mm. that he was in. Uh, so that movie is, is one that I would recommend. Mrs. Miss Sloan is one that I actually want to see. I'm very curious. I'm a big Jessica Chastain fan. And I want to see where this story goes. I'm going to see that this weekend. So I, I, the question is, if they were both out and I didn't see them both, I'd want to see both of them. But I'd lean towards Nocturnal Animals. Mark? I mean, neither one of them has a four-armed beast named Goro. But what Nocturnal <laughs> Animals has is some of the best performances of the year. Tom Ford blew my mind as a director. The story within a story, I agree with you, Michael Shannon, is definitely going to get nominated for Best Supporting Actor. I was falling in love with both of these tales, the way they wind together, the way the movie uh, resolves itself, I thought was very interesting and unique. So I'm excited. Excited to see Miss Sloan, but Nocturnal Animals would be my pick. Uh, I'm looking forward to them both. I love Jessica Chastain. Just the other night, just for on a whim, because I was getting ready to go back, popped in The Martian for a little bit. Mm. I love Jessica Chastain so much. Uh, that, but like everything, I've not seen Nocturnal Animals yet. I'm mm. going to see that tomorrow, I believe. And everybody's just raving about it. Can't wait to see them both. This is a good weekend. Uh, yeah, I, I've seen Nocturnal Animals. I agree that it's one of those films where it, it will haunt you for a few days. You, it will be on your mind. You will think about it for a few days. Some of the best performances. I personally think that Amy Adams was better in Arrival than this movie, but that's just me. Michael Shannon, for sure, though, um, I, I agree with you. It's one of my favorite characters this year. And just a supporting character, he's not in it a lot, but every scene he's in, he completely steals. But I'm a huge Chastain fan, and I want to see what she does in that, because she looks like she could be just like just completely shrewd, like the Ides of March, but hopefully better, you know? Mm, right. And so I, I, I want to see what she does for that, so I am looking forward to that one, because hey, history is history, and I've seen the other one. Schnapp. Sure. I mean, these are both on my list. I, I echo what you guys said about Jessica. I think she's a great actress, but Nocturnal Animals is the one that I cannot wait to see. I'm definitely seeing it this weekend. Uh, the cast is there. The story sounds really intelligent and fun, and, and like I can't wait to see how it turns out. And hear what you guys said about it. It makes me even more excited. So, all right, guys, well, listen. I want to remind you that this is not the only show today that's going up on Collider Video. Uh, a little bit later today, we have the brand new episode of Jedi Council is going up with, of course, Christian Harloff leading that show there. Make sure you check that out. It drops around 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Keep your eyes open for that. And keep your eyes open for all the breaking news. And by the way, tomorrow's Movie Trivia Schmodown is a special one. We've got... <clears throat> Jeff the Insider Schneider is taking on Chris Stuckman. Uh, so keep your Ooh. eyes open that. That'll be a really fun one. So keep your eyes on that. Uh, listen, guys, we're going to take a little bit of time now to take some of your live Twitter questions. 
We're going to skip our mailbag because we're running short on time, but we want to make sure you guys who are watching this live, we get to some of your questions. Start tweeting in your questions now to at Collider Video. And right now, Ashley over there is frantically trying to pull questions. <laughs> I didn't she know thought, we were going to skip the mailbag. Okay. <laughs> because she thought we were going to be doing mailbags. And she's like frantically pulling them together. But start sending in your questions. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at Collider Video. Tweet it on in your questions. Ashley's going to pick a couple out. Cut her some slack because I just caught her off guard. Right. So, Ashley, Let's you talk got about one blood ready rain. for us? Okay, yes. Um, all right. <laughs> she dances okay. when she's nervous. A. Clay writes, what him. songs would you like to hear on the soundtrack for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? Oh, that's, good. that's, that's a, a very good question. Good one. So they've I, moved that into the me off guard. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to hear can... some, some Van Halen, actually. Oh, of oh, course, yeah. this guy, yes. <laughs> Panama. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind hearing some Van Halen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I, was, I was saying, Panama. I think if there's going to be a Van Halen song in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, it's not going to be off 1984. I think it's going to be off one of their first two records. I think Dance the Night Away would be my top contender. Ooh. in Guardians of the Galaxy. In a romantic scene. Maybe an Ain't Talk About Love. You want to get a little bit hardcore. Um, I also think some Huey Lewis in the news might sneak in there somewhere. Some bon I'd, like to see, uh, I'd like to see Chris Pratt rock down some Prince. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, Purple Rain. Prince would be that's amazing. Purple Rain. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. I would that? like to see Judas Priest. Some heads are going to roll. Just a little bit of metal. I want to say, you know, something a little tougher. Yeah, I, I, I do think that they're going to have some Bon Jovi in there somewhere. Bon Jovi. Slippery oh, you you got to have some Slippery One oh, Wet. Okay. I just thought of a song, though, that I will actually bet anybody here a dollar. I'll, I'll put a dollar on this. Jay Giles Band Centerfold is Ooh. going to be oh. in Guardians of the Galaxy. Can I too. give you a dollar that, that it does happen? Just because I think hits. that's a great are suggestion. Are you trying to piggyback off my I'm bet? I'm piggybacking. Let's go to Arby's <laughs> together. That fits a lot. Okay, what's next? Dylan Langs writes, hey guys, what historical event or biopic would you like to be made and who would you like to star in and direct it? Oof. Well, that's a little too in-depth. Yeah. So, uh, what actual historical event? Somebody actually asked me this on my Facebook page the other day. I would love, because of who I am, I would love to see one on the old Canada-Russia Summit Series, hockey series. When you actually look in the history, the, the drama behind that, the politics involved in that, the way it ended, it's iconic, it's incredible. That's one I would like to see. What about you, Christian? Uh, I don't know. I got to think about it a little bit right. more. I got, I, got, I, got, okay. uh, I got Don Cheadle playing Robert Johnson, who is credited with being one of the inventors of the modern blues as we know it. He also is rumored to have sold his soul to the devil. Didn't on he the do train one tracks. about a, like a, a jazz player, like a biopic of he a did, jazz uh, player? Miles Davis. Miles yeah. Davis yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that if, if Cheadle, he, he's got the look and he's got that far away stare that he can pull off in his eyes to be somebody like Robert Johnson, who was a bit of a tortured soul, but also is one of the great musicians of the guitar. Jeremy. Martin Scorsese directs a film about the Red Baron. I don't know why. I've always wanted to see a good film about wow, the Red yeah. Baron because this dude like Snoopy's, Snoopy's done Snoopy's several. Yeah, yeah. Snoopy <laughs> has taken on the Red yes. Baron one on one, held his own for sure. It's just a fascinating thing. This dude was like the guy in the sky that no one wanted to go up against. If he was on the German side, I find that fascinating. They talked about a Hannibal movie for a long time and with uh yeah, oh, with Vin, Vin Diesel, Vin Diesel. Was do yeah, but I'd like to see them actually do that uh maybe not with Vin Diesel these elephants sure. of family <laughs> well I was originally <laughs> yeah right you got to stick together um <laughs> elephants jumps from one mountaintop to the next that's right the daring, fantastical the daring feet. That's through, the through a mountain <laughs> yeah and then right. yet survives how um a Benjamin Franklin mummy attacker came out right away. <laughs> yeah. like just, but then I thought about it, and seriously, a Carl Sagan. I would love to see a biopic mm. about Carl Sagan because that man is amazing. Right. Okay, what's next? Christopher Woodburn writes, why would Assassin's Creed come out around Rogue One when it has a big budget because Rogue One is going to crush it? It's true. <laughs> um, no, it's interesting, but also it, December, <clears throat> here's the thing, it's like su summer in many ways. December is a time that a lot of people go to the movies. A lot of people go to the movies. So while, yes, you do have a Rogue One there that is going to be like just a monster that's rolling through it, mm -hmm. there's a much bigger audience there. So even if a movie like Rogue One comes out and dominates a lot of the box office, there's still box office to go around. I wouldn't have put it there personally, but it's not its not as ridiculous of an idea as you might think. Chris, what do you think? I think they might be hoping and crossing their fingers. So, uh, different audience. It was smarter for when Sisters did this last Absolutely, year. Absolutely, right? yeah. But I think they're hoping for like those sold-out crowds that were like, ah, they can't see Rogue One in a second week. Come see Assassin's Creed. The problem with putting it there is the movie has to be... It's got to be the number one movie on the list that we just yes, did. Yeah. It's got to be great. Because if it's great and people start talking about it, like, whoa, I know you saw Rogue One, but you should go check out Assassin's Creed. Right. And you have people talking about it. 
it could be a smart strategy, but I just don't know how great the movie's going to be yet. I would think the counter-programming option would be Passengers, because that comes out the same weekend as Assassin's Creed. I think that what you're banking on with Assassin's Creed is that a lot of people who play video games might have some disposable income. What does that mean? They're probably going to see Rogue One in the first five days that it has come mm -hmm. out. So they will have seen Rogue One and then want to go see Assassin's Creed. If you're seeing two movies this Christmas, you might make Assassin's Creed your second pick if you're a huge fan of Star Wars. And that, that's the other dynamic here. Is like, remember, when people go to the movies and you have a great time at a movie and they're banking on people are going to have a great time at Rogue One, you are more likely to want to go out to the movies again next yeah. weekend. So I think they're kind of banking on that a little bit. Your uh, your comment reminded me of the ad for Austin Powers 2, where it's like, if you're going to see one movie this summer, see Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to see two, see, see I don't, maybe Powers. that's what they're going for. I don't know. I do feel like everyone who sees Assassin's Creed or would see Assassin's Creed is seeing Rogue One. Not everyone who's seeing Rogue One is seeing Assassin's Creed, right. so I feel like Assassin's Creed might get swallowed up, but where else are they going to put it? I mean, if they're January and February, it's seen as a throwaway movie. If it's anywhere else, it's going up against something big. So I have no idea where they would put it, but uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, it would make our number one list when we do this next time on the search for more money. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> well, I mean, we're hoping that uh, John Campia doesn't say it's endurable. It's like, endurable. You know, Assassin's Creed, it's John endurable. Yeah, that, I mean, if, if it gets critically <laughs> drubbed, then it's not going to do well. But if a lot of people say, you know, Assassin's Creed is really a great video game movie or not just a great video game movie. It's a great movie. Then I think it's going to be like Star Wars is that gigantic whale just eating everything. And it'll just be those little fish. That's what Assassin's Creed is going to like taking the money that the, the giant creature did not ingest. <laughs> right. So. Well, folks, what did we learn today? <laughs> <laughs> By putting together a list of the top five video game movies of all time, we truly understood just how bad the genre has been. When movies like <laughs> Silent Hill and <laughs> Warcraft and Need for Speed make a top five of all time list, your, your genre needs to recover. Maybe <laughs> Assassin's Creed can be that. That'll do it for us for this installment of Movie Talk. I want to thank the guy sitting at the table, sitting over there, Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, uh, watching Wing Commander and House <laughs> of the Dead. <laughs> hey, uh, Wing Commander was going to be, if we kept going, I was I eventually going to get Alone in the dark, crying in a corner. What happened to all these video game movies? Um, yeah, you can find me online. See you later. Jeremy Johns. Yeah, granted, I saw Wing Commander because I wanted to see that Phantom Menace trailer. I, I, I got a movie tacked onto it. You remember yeah, that? Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, at Jeremy Johns, on Facebook, at Real Jeremy Johns. Over here, Mr. Mark Ellis. Uh, you can find me hosting the Schmozno Live Show tonight, 7 p.m. PST. We have a really fun show, and we're going to be talking a lot about Rogue One because we're going to the premiere on Saturday. Look out for that on Twitter, just at Mark Ellis Live. And coming up in a scant couple weeks, the Schmodown Spectacular. And, of course, Mr. Christian Harloff. Well, you can find me on Collider Jedi Council, which John mentioned before, that We'll be up today at 5 p.m. Find me at Christian Harlov on Twitter and Instagram. And Snyder and Stuckman goes up on the channel right here tomorrow, 2 p.m. Miss Ashley Mova. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Ashley Mova. Happy Thursday, guys. And uh, if you thought uh, that that little uh, movie was bad, wait to see what I do to Freddie Prince Jr. in a couple of weeks <laughs> when me and Ken Knapsack take on Freddie Prince Jr. And, Fr uh, and Sam Witwer in an all Star Wars movie trivia battle. Keep your eyes open for that. Of course, you guys can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter, simply at John K. But thanks a lot for joining us, guys. We'll be back tomorrow. So until next time, bye-bye. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.